All right, greetings, friends. Uh, today we have a little bodybuilding for you, not much. Um, just a little something to whet your appetite today. Uh, once again, we're going to hit the legs just a little bit in our uh, Series 200 workouts. Today we're going to focus a little bit on the upper thigh upper thigh muscle and that's going to incorporate um, some hack squats and um, don't let anybody kid you hack squats uh, even though they're a partial movement they are very good uh, for your overall leg strength structure back strength overall body and core strength and so we're going to tackle uh, hacks just a little bit. We got you just a little bit of a taste. Uh, last time we did our uh, squat workout, we gave you just a little uh, tail end, like a, like the little clips at the end of movies. They give you just a little teaser of what could happen in the future. Well, here we are. The little, that was the little clip and now we're in the future and now we're, we're gonna tackle a little bit of hack squats today. Lord willing and time permitting, we are going to have a nice little uh, hack squat routine. And uh, as is customary in the Bears gym, uh, we are going to have just a little scripture, a little Bible reading. Don't freak out. Don't panic. Or those of you that enjoy to hear Bible, unfortunately it will be short. But uh, so we have just a little bit for everybody and uh, just a little parable from the book of Mark, chapter 4, verse 21. Jesus is speaking. He's talking about candles. We don't use candles a whole awful lot except when the power goes out or we're having a nice little dinner together or just as kind of a, a, a mood enjoyment thing in the dark uh, around the dinner table or family tea time. Um, and they're a little nicer than a light bulb. They have uh, an ambience that's uh, enjoyable. Jesus makes a reference to Christians Christians were, weren't really called Christians until later on in New Testament times in Antioch. You will run into that in the book of Acts where it says uh, Christians were first called Christians in Antioch. And um, it's a nice expression. Uh, most of you know what that means. Some of you don't. Some of, some of you think it just means being a good American. No, just being good. Good for the sake of being good. Well, that's not true because there is none righteous, no, not one. And that's why we all must be born again. We must turn from our sin and follow Jesus Christ. But we have our ups and our downs, but we must get up and we must exercise repentance in our life for the Holy Spirit, God's Spirit that dwells in us to stay. Because if you're not living a, a clean and holy life, according to God's standard, the Holy Spirit will not abide in you. And for you to be a candle, the Holy Spirit must be living in you. So let's, let's read our little text here today, verse 21 of Mark 4. And he said unto them, that's Jesus, is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed, obviously no. If you've ever lit a candle, you don't put it under a basket or under a bed. You put it up on the table or up on a nightstand or book stand or a mantle or something. Is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed and not to set on a candlestick? Certainly, in the old days, candles were way more important than they are now. But when you buy a lamp at the store, 
The lamp doesn't get tucked underneath the bed or in a closet. It gets tucked up high or on a table or on a stand so that you can see from it. Similar also with the candlestick. It was put out in the open so it would generate light. The light that Jesus is referring to, once again, is not necessarily us, but it's the Holy Spirit abiding in us. And when the Holy Spirit abides in us, just the fact that we're there means that we're a little glowing flame. And if we're not a little glowing flame by the presence of the Holy Spirit, there's something wrong in your life with sin. That's always the issue, not you don't, you have problems with your, you know, your co-workers, you have problem with various aspects of the Bible or with your parents. Those are not the problem. The problem is your sin. And your sin needs to be repented of. That the Holy Spirit may abide in you and that you may be a bright, glowing candlestick that others may see. Not just for the sake of, you know, standing out of, wow, look at him. But the point being is, you serve a purpose. You generate the light of God in your life because of the Holy Spirit. And so that's kind of our parable for today. Uh, not a long one, as I said, I promised. Not a long one, but an enjoyable one. And with that, we're going to do a few hack squats here. Um, we're going to do mid-range, um, so we're not doing too much scream, screaming and spitting and hollering and so forth. <laughs> so here we go. Hack squat day. I'm going to spin this so you can see a little better, and I hope you enjoy. So, very similar to a squat. It's just a partial squat. Just kind of gets partial movement, gets your upper thighs really involved. All right, here we go. Keep in mind you should have done a little bit of workout already. Just a little warm up, maybe three sets of warm ups, two, three, you know, one to three sets of warm ups and just kind of get your blood pumping and your body warmed up. So here we go. going to put on another plate here. I'm not going to take it too far, but I want you to get the idea and the feel. If you're in your own little home gym or at a organized gym, you can uh, incorporate some calves with this. You can incorporate some abs with this. 
um, just to kind of keep a kind of a flush set thing going. But I'm just gonna kind of pass all that so that you can kind of see the core exercise here. And hopefully you can see basically the movement, which is pretty enjoyable. It's kind of nice. Um, it's kind of a nice rainy day in Wisconsin here. A little bit chilly. Um, we're still a little bit in the spring here. Um, but still a little bit cool, you know, with the fire's going, wood's burning, uh, still getting down there at night, which is kind of typical Wisconsin. Uh, summer is very, very short. Winter is very long. Those of you that have lived in Wisconsin can, can relate with that. So um, those that live farther north, I feel for you. Um, any farther north, it would be difficult for this bear. I, I like to, I like to have summer eventually. <laughs> All right, little cup of Joe here. <sighs> morning Joe, morning Bible. Just a nice way to start the day. Anyway, let's see. We got a plate on. We're all clipped on. Yep, we're good. Okay. Here we go round two. Little hacks. A partial movement you're not going too deep concentrate on the upper half of the thigh muscle we're we gonna slap on a plate Looking good. One of the other aspects, I'm gonna swing you around here again. Hope you don't mind. One of the aspects of a candle is in the darkness. In a very, very dark place. If you've ever been in a cave, if you light a candle, you can see it a long way off. The darker it is, the brighter a candle shines. And sometimes when the candle burns brightly in a dark place, that makes evil very unhappy. Understand that and expect that. Following Jesus Christ is not a friendship club with the world. 
You can be friends, but the day will come where you'll have to choose between compromising and being a candle. And if you're interested in spending eternity with Jesus Christ, you will decide to be a candle. Candles clean. For a candle to burn, there must be cleanliness on the wick and the wax must be clean to get a nice bright flame. If it is not, it won't burn properly. And if it is very dirty, it will go out. And that's very similar to the Christian life. If there's so much sin in your life, there's not much difference between you and the world except that you go to church on Sunday. You're just an empty flower barrel, friend. Doesn't matter if you're a preacher, a missionary, elder, deacon, mommy, daddy. If you claim the name of Christ and you let sin abide in there, you're just a hypocrite. I hate to say that, but that's what it is. A hypocrite. That means a pretender, a hoichler. You don't want to be that. Why be that? You don't make anybody happy. You don't make yourself happy. Surely you're not happy with yourself. You don't make God happy, and quite frankly, it really doesn't make your friends happy because if you have to compromise to sin in your life to be accepted in the world, that's not really friendship. Kind of like if you hang out with you know, a bunch of hippies and you dress, you know, like a, like a biker or a bear, they're not really going to accept you. But who cares? Do you want to spend eternity with Jesus Christ or not? Do you want to please your creator? Do you want to be grateful? Do you want to be thankful? Then obey him. Follow him. Walk with him. Okay, let's uh, move along with another, another set here. I don't want to make this too long so I don't lose your attention. Bears talk kind of slow and um, they have a tendency to put you asleep if we don't get moving on, okay? Because bears are pretty good for that. All right, here we go. Looks like we're in good shape. All right. That's pretty comfortable. Seven reps is pretty good for hack day, in my opinion. If I'm gonna do higher reps, I will traditionally keep to a full movement. Though, there's nothing wrong with doing high reps with a partial movement but a partial movement has to do a little bit with feeling the muscle as you're doing the exercise you can kind of feel it okay kind of like if you've ever did 21s with biceps okay 
Once again, I use 21s. You could use 30s. You could use anything, but I'm going to say 21s. Okay, you do bottom, halfway up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, then you start partially way up, and you go up halfway down, seven, and then all the way down, and then all the way up seven times. That's 21s. That's 21 in the Bears gym. And so anyway, seven is a good kind of mid-range, uh, very heavy power lifting. Once again, you probably keep in a three to five range. Um, uh, sometimes in winter, I like to do 12 reps just to keep my body warm, you know. Three sets of 12 out in the Bears gym, even when it's, you know, 20 below, you know, by the third set of 12 reps, you know, with squats or a group set or whatever, you're sweating, you know. And so, and that's kind of good to do in uh, the winter time. Did I say winter? Yeah, I meant winter. So I think I said winter. But anyway, winter, kind of traditionally more reps because it gets your body warmed up. But it's kind of warm out now to a bear. It's probably 40, you know. Maybe 50, I don't know. But I'm sweating, you know. I had my, my pre-warm up sets and so forth. And I'm already kind of cooking inside here. So anyway, um, I think that's hacks for today. I think we'll call it. Uh, I got my other 45s tied up on other <laughs> exercise areas in the Bears gym. I guess I kind of apologize for that. I'd have to do a lot of tearing down to get to them. But we'll kind of keep it there, okay? So we had three rounds. Make sure you get your warm-up sets in before that. And you can take it on up farther if you want. Stack on some more plates, uh, whatever. And uh, so I'll give you the basic idea of hack squat. So for today in the Bears Gym, hope you've enjoyed hack squats. Uh, very similar to squats. Very similar to deep squats, except for the fact you're only doing a partial movement and we're kind of concentrating on the upper thighs. Um, so, from the Bears Gym, I bid you God bless until next time. We'll see you, friends.